to log into this live. Um, for whatever reason, this topic has been floating around uh, with a lot of believers I see on my social media arguing about it, going back and forth about it. Then Pastor Jamal Bryant, he came out and he made a statement about it. And he's been getting some backlash, uh, believe it or not, from, you know, some individuals. Um, it's no secret that me and uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant probably don't agree and see eye to eye on everything. But, I mean, in the Bible, Peter and Paul, they didn't agree on everything either. Um, you know, this is normal. Okay, so I'm going to break it down uh, with some Bible verses and uh, give you some background on it. So the, the big thing is, you know, is it okay for me to burn sage? People have different arguments about, uh, you know, can I burn it um, and things like that. So we're going to get in the background. I'm going to give the explanation and I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible because I know people's attention spans are short. The first Bible verse that came to my mind when I began to pray about this was Leviticus 10.1.3. And the deep and above the sons of Aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense therein and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. So we see here, this is what the Lord whispered uh, to me in prayer time when I asked him about it. Strange fire. All right. They were burning uh, incense and it was not acceptable to the Lord. And now if you look at the roots of what they call smudging and burning stage, it's this new age movement. And the new age movement, they believe in the spiritual world. They believe in the spiritual realm, but they don't believe in the higher authority. Right. So check this out. We talked about this before accessing the spiritual world illegally. Right. And people access the spiritual world through uh, drugs. Right. People smoke weed and they say, man, I saw devils. I saw this. I heard this. I heard that people access the spiritual world through witchcraft, witchcraft. We see in the Bible that um, the witch was able to raise up the uh, the spirit of the prophet Samuel after he was dead. And she was not a believer. She was not a Christian, but she was able to access the spiritual world. So the new age movement, they draw this from native Americans. That's where the practice started. And with the native Americans, it was a spiritual thing. All right. It was a demonic thing because if it doesn't come from the spirit of God, if that's not where you're accessing the power from, you're accessing it from a different power. The prince of the air, demonic forces in the air, spirits in the air. If it's not the spirit of God, you're accessing the spiritual world through a different door. So if I don't go through the door, all right, of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, I'm accessing other, uh, other, other spirits. Spirits, all right. Mark 325 says Satan cannot drive out Satan. All right. So I can't use these other spirits and these other message, uh, uh, methods to cast out these things in my home. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to it because I know some of you saying, well, I only burn it as incense. Now, check it out. When you look at the history of it, and even if you look at what people are talking about it today, they say, well, it purifies and it clears the air. And th these are what people say. Like if you look up and research why people burn sage and do all this stuff, it says um, it's a psychoactive thing. It's spiritual. It removes negative energy. It can cleanse and empower objects, empower objects. It can improve your mood. It can soothe stress. It can improve sleep. It can increase cognition. It can boost energy. So it looks like Really, it's like a substitute like other things, right? I, I, I'm, I'm going to use the sage so I can clear the atmosphere. I'm, I'm going to use the sage so I can I can have some stress relief, okay? But we know that the Bible says, um, check this out, that God is the one that's going to protect you. Sec, Second Thessalonians 3 and 3, but the Lord is faithful. Who will establish you and keep you from evil? Psalms 121, 7 and 8, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from the time forth and even forevermore. Acts 1 8 says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So why do I need a substitute? Why do I need sage? Now here's some, they say, Sage will cleanse your home from demons. And if you're feeling sluggish, if you have a creepy basement, burn some sage. Why do I need that when God has given me the Holy Spirit to overcome all things? There's nothing greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Why do I need sage? This can become a false God. This can become a lowercase g God. They liken sage into crystals and other things that people are using. Now, some people say, well, I'm just burning it for the incense. I like how it smells. 
Well, here's the Bible verse that I would respond to with that. First Corinthians 10, 23, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. All right. So why is the, the Bible says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Why would I, if I know the roots of it, right? If I know the roots of why they started doing it, why do I want that in my home? If I know, like, for example, I'll give you another example. Horror movies, right? Someone who makes a horror movie, they have to go to a dark place. And they've got to think of the most evil, disgusting stuff. They have to access something in their mind that allows, to come up, allows them to come up with the most wicked imaginations. And then they take those wicked imaginations and they put it on film. Now you say, oh, I'm just going to bring the DVD in my home and I'm, go I'm going to watch it because it's entertainment, right? I'm just going to burn the sage because it smells good. I'm just going to watch the movie because it's entertaining. But what you're bringing into your house, the root of it, where it came from, where it was produced was, oh man, let me think of the most evil, wicked thing. I, I got to tap into something. I can come up with the most, and you bring that into your home. This is not wise. And I saw a woman say something very ish, interesting about Christianity. She said, well, you know, you guys talk about burning sage, but they burn incense in the Old Testament, which we already read in Leviticus. Um, she said, you guys talk about spirits and how it's bad in the spirit world, but you guys say that you receive a spirit inside of you and it fills you up. And then um, what else? She said something else. I wrote it down. She was talking about, oh, altars. She said, you know, you guys complain about we build altars and stuff like that in our homes, but you had altars in the Old Testament. Let me tell you something. This is something that a lot of people do not understand about the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. This is why people to this day still argue about the thief on the cross, right? Before Jesus died and rose again, everything that happened before to the point where he rose again was Old Covenant. Okay, and in the old covenant, they were killing animals and they were putting them on the altar. That was acceptable for that time period. That was the covenant between them and God. Once Jesus died and rose, we entered a new covenant. That's why the thief on the cross was able to just repent. And because the blood that was being shed, right, he was able to go to heaven. And people do not understand that difference between old covenant and new covenant. So in the new covenant, you go to John, what is it, 14? He says, I'm going to send the comforter. I'm going to send the spirit, right? When we, when we say have an altar in your home now, it's not these altars that people are building and burning incense on to Mary and all this other kinds of witchcraft, okay? You have, you have your corner because you have direct access to God just like Adam had. So you just find your little altar, your little prayer spot. Here's the other thing I want to say about the sage. You can take this to alcohol. You can take this to smoking weed because I see Christians who argue about that. My issue with these things always has been this, right? Because people want to argue about it. And this is just, this is just Marcus talking. I'm not telling you what to do. I've seen people, unless they drink, right? They just, oh man, I just got to have a drink. I just, I just got to have a smoke. I just, I got to burn the sage and, and I got to, I got to feel the aroma in my house, right? It becomes a God. And, and so we can be fair about it. You can apply this to anything. How many of you get a headache and you run to the Tylenol before you even pray, before you even ask God to heal you, I'm already popping Tylenol. That thing has become a lowercase g God in your life because you put more faith and trust in the medicine. You don't even give God a chance to heal you. How many people run to shopping? How many people run to sex? Whatever you run to before you run to God and you put it before God, it becomes, okay, a lowercase g God. It becomes an idol in your life. So if you, if it's like, oh, I just got to drink, I just got to burn this because just the atmosphere that, why depend on those things when the Bible clearly tells you that God has got you? If you really have the Holy Spirit, number one, the Holy Spirit will tell you no. The Holy Spirit will tell you wrong, that it's wrong. But if you really have the Holy Spirit and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, why do I need those things? And then if it's all about just cleaning my air, you can buy you a house plant. Plants clean the air. You can open the window. You can spray some Lysol. So if I know the roots of where the sage burning comes from and what they like to call smudging, why would I bring that into my home? All right. And give the enemy access. The Bible says, give no place 
to the devil, if I know that it has demonic roots and I say, well, I'm just going to use it for different reasons, why would I bring it into my home? Because I'm giving place to the devil. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, summarize this because I know people are coming in and out. So if you've been with me, uh, from the beginning of this video, you can just end it here, but I want to summarize everything that I just went over. Leviticus 10, one through three and Abib and Abu, the sons of Aaron took either of them, his censer, they put fire therein, they put incense therein, and they offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not witchcraft. Okay. And there went out a fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. So they were burning all of this little stuff and the Lord wasn't pleased with it. And he devoured them. Okay. And the, the point that I used in the video, because people say, well, I'm using sage for this. I'm not using witchcraft. It's the same thing with horror movies. A guy who makes a horror movie, he has wicked imaginations. He has to tap into some evil stuff to think up the most disgusting, evil, wicked thing he can. And to me, it's demonic. Then he takes that and he puts it on film. And then you take the DVD and you bring it in your house. He birthed it in a demonic place. He birthed it in a place that uh, he wasn't tapping in, into anything godly. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So he birthed that thing in a demonic place, and now you bring it into your home. Now you bring it into your spirit, your eye gates, your ear gates. It's saying, I'm just watching it for entertainment. I'm not doing witchcraft. I'm just burning it. But it has demonic roots, and you're bringing it into your home. This is unwise. This is unwise. And then we use the Bible verse to back that up. All things are lawful for me. Yeah, I can do it. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me but all things edify not. So if your only reason that you're burning it is to clean and purify the air, why not just get some Lysol? Why not just open your windows? Why not just get you a house plant? And if you're a Christian and you're, you're mixing that new age stuff, you're practicing witchcraft. I hate to, I hate to tell it to you practicing witchcraft. All right. So that's just something to think about. If you don't remember nothing else I said in this video, Remember the, the, the um, thing about the horror flick. They go to a demonic place to create that. And even though you feel that your intentions are, well, it's just, it's just entertainment. I just entertainment. You're bringing something that was birthed in the spirit world demonically into your home. So the roots of burning sage comes from a demonic place. And you're bringing that into your home. You got to guard yourself. Love you guys. I don't want to make this video much longer than that. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.